It's February 3rd, 2002. The Louisiana Superdome plays host to Super Bowl 36, where the St. Louis Rams and New England Patriots are tied at 17. With seven seconds left, Adam Vinatieri is lining up from 48 yards out to wrap this up and not give the Rams a chance in overtime. While it all comes down to one kick, this season has been anything but straightforward. Which naturally means the underdog Patriots have the power to knock off the Rams who entered tonight as a two touchdown favorite. But it's not that simple. It wouldn't be fun if it was. So to remember how we got to this point, let's rewind. 48 yards is definitely not a gimme, but it's by far the closest the Patriots have ever come to winning a Super Bowl. New England has had more downs than ups thus far as a franchise. Since joining the NFL via the merger, the Patriots have had two chances at the Lombardi Trophy, both of which happened to also be in the Superdome, and both of them were over well before the final whistle. Not long after the first appearance, they went through an eight-year playoff drought that saw the franchise change ownership three times. They were flirting with bankruptcy in the late 80s, and team founder Billy Sullivan took out a loan from the league just to pay his players. The team was losing millions on a yearly basis, and by 1988, Sullivan was $126 million in the red. That year, after a deal with Donald Trump fell through, Sullivan auctioned off the team to high bidder Victor Kayyem. Their home since 1971 also went up for grabs and was claimed for $22 million by Robert Kraft. While the stadium had seen better days, the sale included the lease to Patriot home games. Kraft, a longtime season ticket holder, had no intentions of letting them break this agreement as Kayyem flirted with moving the franchise. And when Kayyem fell on hard times of his own and sold the Pats to James Orthwine, Kraft really didn't buckle. He turned down a very generous offer to ensure the team would stay in New England. And when Orthwine realized he couldn't relocate the Patriots to St. Louis, he no longer wanted them. Kraft bought the team and three seasons later, New England was back in the Super Bowl. And five years after that, they've done it again. This time against a team that they unintentionally helped find a new home in St. Louis. While the Patriots would obviously prefer their first Super Bowl victory, just guaranteeing that they won't be blown out is a major improvement. That said, they know overtime is a pretty terrible alternative given the fact that this Rams team has finally woken up. It's the greatest show on turf. A two-time league MVP. The Offensive Player of the Year three years running. Multiple thousand yard receivers. St. Louis once again led the league in total offense and points per game and had a new look defense that helped recapture the magic that won them the Super Bowl two seasons ago. They finished the regular season with the best record in the league and once again had the best point differential by far. In the divisional round, they cruised past the Packers and then held off the Eagles thanks to Marshall Falk's continued dominance. But just like two years ago when the Rams kept having to settle for field goals, it took a while for their offense to click in the Super Bowl. Through three quarters, St. Louis managed just three points. They technically produced another seven when Kurt Warner was picked off by Ty Law and 47 yards later, New England was on top. That plus two more turnovers helped put St. Louis down 14 going into the fourth, the same amount that they were favored by entering tonight. With under 12 to play, Falk got the Rams offense into the red zone for the first time all game. Warner connected with Jeff Robinson for six yards on first down, but was nearly picked off in the end zone by Lawyer Malloy, then again by Law on consecutive plays to set up fourth and goal from the three. Mike Martz kept his offense out there, but when Warner couldn't find anyone through the air, he decided to keep it himself. He's gonna try to scramble in. Lost the ball, the Patriots have it. They scoop it up. This is to Bucky Jones, to Bucky Jones. But instead of a record-setting return to go up 21, the refs flagged Willie McGinnis for defensive holding, giving St. Louis a fresh set of downs and keeping their hopes alive. Two plays later, Warner had better luck on the ground and made it a seven point game. That score held as the Rams got the ball inside the two minute warning. Warner found Oz Hakim over the middle who gained 18 before stepping out. He hit Yo Murphy for another 11, again quickly stopping the clock. And then Warner found Ricky Prohl, who made the defenders miss and slipped his way in for the tying score. 
It took them three plays in just 21 seconds to tie this thing up. And now they're left hoping for overtime. But they've left a little too much time on the clock and possibly counted out the Patriots' second year signal caller, which isn't too wild. Tom Brady entered the season with three pass attempts to his name. He limped into the playoffs with just two touchdowns in his last five games. It wasn't that long ago that Brady was at Michigan splitting quarters with a sophomore Drew Henson. It took seven games before the senior actually won the job full time, and he leveraged that success into becoming a sixth round draft pick. After an uneventful rookie season, it looked like he'd have plenty of time to learn as New England gave Drew Bledsoe a record-setting long-term deal. But that investment took a hit two games into the season when Bledsoe was tackled by Mo Lewis and sheared a blood vessel in his chest. Brady filled in and led the Patriots to a 5-5 record, which included a close loss to the league-leading Rams. Following that game, Belichick announced Brady as the starter for the rest of the season, despite Bledsoe being cleared to play. They didn't lose again, and Brady finished the year 11-3 as a starter, a record made more impressive by the fact that the guy that should have been his number one receiver hardly saw the field. Terry Glynn was suspended to start the season, returned to catch Brady's first ever touchdown pass, then was deactivated for seven games due to disputes with the coaching staff. He would come back for three games before the team suspended him for the remainder of their season. However, in Glenn's place, Troy Brown set a franchise reception record in just his second year as a starter. And the ground game got a significant boost from Antoine Smith, who, like Brown, had a career year. So Brady still had some weapons at his disposal. And when the Patriots got the ball back with 1.21 to play and no timeouts, he found his guys. After chipping away with checkdowns to J.R. Redmond, Brady found Brown over the middle, who reached the sideline after picking up 23. Brady hit Wiggins for a quick six yards, then calmly spiked the ball, bringing us back to here. But even being here deserves some context, as in at the Superdome on February 3rd. This game made history before it even began, as the first Super Bowl to take place in February. This was partially due to the league pushing opening weekend to after Labor Day, but mainly because of the September 11th terrorist attacks, which took place two days after the season kicked off. The NFL quickly postponed the Week 2 games and picked them back up September 23rd as stadiums adjusted to heightened security measures. With the postponement, the league then had to decide what to do about the Super Bowl. The Superdome was originally booked on February 3rd for the National Automobile Dealers Convention. So the NFL initially looked to just cancel a round of playoffs to maintain the original championship date. When that was met by a poor response, they considered changing locations. The league finally decided to do right by New Orleans and simply made a deal with the car show. As the league tooled with the schedule, it also meant that there would be just one week between conference championship weekend and the Super Bowl, a timeline made more interesting by an injury to Brady in the AFC Championship game. Bledsoe got his turn to come off the bench and led the team to a win over the favored Steelers. But the injury wasn't bad enough for Belichick to stick with the veteran. Brady was again named the starter, and the 24-year-old hasn't let down his coach. Or not yet. The potential overtime could change things, and to avoid that, it all falls on the leg of Adam Vinatieri. This isn't anything new, though, for the kicker who received some high praise from John Madden as he lined up for the attempt. And Vinatieri and, and making some great kicks against the Raiders, two of the greatest kicks that I've ever seen in my life. Two weeks earlier, New England hosted Oakland in the AFC Divisional Round. Endless snow made for a low-scoring game, and the Patriots found themselves trailing late. While Brady attempted to get them in field goal range to tie it, Charles Woodson came off the edge and forced a fumble that the Raiders easily recovered. With the Patriots out of timeouts, this should have ended the game. But in 1999, the NFL introduced Rule 3, Section 22, Article 2, Note 2, or more easily said, the tuck rule. Inside two minutes, the officials immediately reviewed the fumble, and after a lengthy look, made the call. The quarterback's arm was going forward, it is an incomplete <laughs> No fumble, no lost yards on a sack, and just three seconds off the clock. Phil Simms managed to sum it up perfectly. I think it's safe to say, but this will be talked about quite a bit. You think? 
The Patriots trudged ahead for 14 yards on the following four plays, which gave Vinatieri a chance from 45 yards out. And in these miserable conditions, he made the biggest and arguably ugliest kick of his life to force overtime. Then, after Sebastian Janikowski kicked off, the Raiders wouldn't touch the ball again. Brady led a 14-play drive to cover 61 yards, the bulk of which came through the air despite the snow, and gave Vinatieri a much more manageable 23-yard game winner. And now, with friendlier conditions, he has the chance to once again be the hero. If he hits, it will cap off one of the most unexpected seasons by a quarterback who has had his share of luck from start to finish. It would give New England their first Super Bowl and let Boston claim a championship for the first time in 15 years. A miss would give the Rams a chance to solidify the NFL's newest dynasty with their second Super Bowl in three years and an offense that has no reason to start slowing down. In a season where football has been more than just a game, it makes too much sense that it comes down to one kick. Welcome to a moment in history. Oh, snap ball down, kick up, kick is on the way, and it is good! Okay, so some things got cut for time. David Patton's awesome touchdown, Bono's American flag jacket at halftime, the Patriots entering as a team, details on the Rams Super Bowl win from two seasons ago, but hey, if you want that last one at least, there's another video about that. Check out some other rewinders and make sure you subscribe to SB Nation for more.